So the British seaside holiday, what are we talking about? Obviously deck chairs, uh, fish and chips, sand in all the wrong places, and for many people, <laughs> little people, a donkey ride on the beach. Although donkey rides have been a staple of British summer since the 1800s, uh, a petition in Western Supermare is now seeking to ban what they call an outdated and cruel activity. Well, joining us now to discuss this are TV chef and dad of three, Theo Michaels, who says the donkeys are doing something which gives us all joy and they are well looked after. And Peter spokesperson Jennifer White, who says it's cruel and unfair. Why is it cruel and unfair, Jennifer? Well, look, donkeys aren't taxis and they're not fairground rides. And treating them as such is completely outdated, cruel and unnecessary. And frankly, there is no excuse for forcing an animal to work under the hot sun, often for hours on end, and forcing them to carry people on their back. And, you know, by banning donkey rides, it would do absolutely nothing to diminish the fun that families could have at the beach. But it would mean the world to these animals, because we know that whenever animals are treated as commodities, their best interests are compromised. Well, I see, and I beg to differ on this, because for me, I think donkey rides are part of the tapestry of the British uh, culture. They bring so much joy and pleasure to kids, to families on the beach. And I think there's, there's a big discrepancy here. So when we talk about exploitation of animals, we have a connotation of poor welfare, which you mentioned then, hot sun, beating down on them, they're not being well looked after, but this isn't the case. So most, most donkey, uh, donkey rides, if you like, on, on the beach, the councils that look after those areas have a set of regulations in, in place. The donkeys can only work a certain number of hours, um, there's only a maximum weight that donkeys are allowed it's to carry. Eight stone. If I eight stone. Just... All these rules are great in theory, but what we see in practice is very different. And this is why countless... In Britain, in the UK. Yeah, in Britain, in the UK, countless donkey ride suppliers, one in Whitby, for example, was found guilty of gross animal abuse and neglect. There was 25 animals. They were suffering from being malnourished, overgrown hooves, skin infections. They didn't have access to fresh food and water, no room to forage or do anything that comes naturally so to they, these animals. So they were duly punished. But the, I have to say that the owners of the, the, the firm in Western Supermarket, which has been going for over 100 years say so they're inviting people like you to go down and have a look and they're saying spend the day with us and you'll see how well we treat them how much we love our donkeys which for example are allowed to wander wherever they like across the sand so they don't get bored they have a day off a week they work as you said a certain number of hours a day and just to make the broader point i mean humankind has had a relationship with donkeys going back thousands of years you know mary r rode into bethlehem Mm. A pregnant Mary. Jesus himself rode a donkey later. We've been, we've had a symbiotic relationship with them. Isn't this a little bit simplistic? Just well, to say just that. Just because something like... has been done or is seen as a tradition certainly does not make it right. Mm. And there really is no excuse for cruelty. And we have to understand that these donkeys get absolutely nothing from this experience. And we know don't, that don't by. They, they have a livelihood, don't they? So uh, the, I think there's the other part of this is there is an industry built around donkey rides. So you've got a family business, 148 years, that have been cultivating and working in partnership with the donkeys. Well, it's if not we, a partnership. Take, but it is a partnership, because the donkeys, they're having great fun on the beach. They're not being overworked. I think this is the key point here, is the welfare of the donkeys are in good stead. But that generates then income. It allows those businesses to maintain the donkeys, to, to keep them growing, to have them in stables, to look after them. If we take away the vocations, if you like, almost, of the donkeys, you, you eliminate family businesses, you eliminate industry, but and then you rely are always on having to adapt but then with you rely the times on the spirit history. To look after donkeys the demand that wouldn't at be the able moment, to cope with it. Consumers are so much more aware of mm. where their money is going and people don't want to put their hand in their pocket for um you know so well, called they do. Well, they, well then well, the marketplace to take what when you said that they get nothing out of it, it my impression is that actually donkeys rather enjoy human company. Well, Very often, you know, I used to grow up in the country, there was a donkey that was in a field and it would always run over when we went for a walk. And it was, you could tell, it wasn't because it needed feeding, it had plenty of pasture and food, that there was a curiosity there. Does it have to be all bad? Well, I think your point is that that donkey was in a field mm. um, and that is where donkeys should be and they enjoy the company of other donkeys. You know, mm. we know that having to give people rides puts immense, like, pain and, and stress on their joints, on their muscles, um, and there is just absolutely no need for it. It is 2024. There are so many ways we can amuse ourselves at mm -hmm. the beach. But you use the word... You use the word 
cruelty in one of your earlier answers there. Can you sort of toss that word out? Are you really confident you can make that accusation for this particular company, London Western Supermare? Because they would, they would very much get up on their hind legs, as it were, and say, no, we are not cruel to our donkeys. They're happy. Well, this issue isn't just about this one company, though. It's yeah. about all of the companies, and there I are a lot that, yeah. of suppliers mm. who have been faced with abuse and neglect charges, and you simply can't mm. ignore that. But it is also just the bigger picture of you know, donkeys are not props for entertainment. And we know that whenever animals are used for human gain, their best interests are compromised. And that's something this is we see more time conversation and time then around enforcing regulations, isn't it? Like, if we go on the basis no. that actually the regulations are enforced and the donkeys are well looked after, I think it brings more than just pleasure to people. I think the human interaction with animals, like, we love, we've got dogs, right? Everyone loves animals. Mm. But the joy that our children get and the the sense of, of responsibility and looking after, to have that exposure to a lot of people that would travel, for instance, to Margate, right? our family in Margate, we used to go down there as kids all the time. We've taken our kids on donkey rides. You're, you're going from a sort of a, a city environment to suddenly you've got this beautiful expanse of see in front of you, and you've got an animal but that you can But do you not think touch. that the best and way that... for your children to learn well, about look, animals is seeing people, them in a natural we, environment? We asked people at home what they thought of this. Is it time to ban them? 48% of you said yes. 52% mm. said no. Well, so you just you. That's, hit the balance, but it's, it's very close. That's a, that's a lot of people who agree with her. It is. It's closer than I thought. Yeah. And, I, and I don't hold anything against them. <laughs> no, of course not. No, it's, it's, it's called free speech. It's called free speech. <laughs> I love it. It's great, but I'm, I think it's amazing how close it is. Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. Well, you very nearly won the argument.